um when did when did morning chalk up come about like it, i know it was probably like after your contract was over so like how did you get involved with get involved with that team so it's funny i actually started writing for them before my tv contract was up <laughs> okay um and, and it's funny because a television contract is is basically you're signing your life away in in blood they are very binding contracts and that's why if you see somebody actually get out of the tv biz and already have another job lined up honestly the stars aligned for them because that normally does not happen mm -hmm. because of just the language in your contracts and the way that that they end that's a different story but um so while i was still in in the tv world um i had reached out to morning chalk up uh and basically asked if i could start writing for them like hey my tv contract is coming up in i was like between six and eight months i really don't want to re-sign this contract i'm looking mm. to get out permanently do you have some kind of work i can do so i started writing for them um part-time it was CrossFit, so I didn't feel like it was a conflict of interest, but I think if I asked for permission for my TV job, they might have thought otherwise. Yeah, that's <laughs> so what I was thinking, yeah. We just we just didn't talk about it and never crossed paths, so whatever. Um, and then I finally, my contract came up in May of 2021. Um, I was still writing for Morning Chalk Up part time, but I was essentially unemployed for about a month and a half before mm -hmm. I then actually started working full time at my affiliate. So I was coaching there. I was doing their social media, um, really any kind of odd end jobs that could help me collect a paycheck so I yep. could continue to pay my mortgage. Um, and then at some point in time, I started just doing YouTube interviews. And it's so weird because I, when I had left television, I said, I'm never going on camera again. I'm done with this. I just kind of want to wipe my hands clean of this type of like profession, lifestyle, mm -hmm. et cetera. And it was one of my coworkers at the time, Patrick Clark. He was the one that was kind of like nagging me, but in like a good <laughs> friend way, like, mm -hmm. hey, I really think you should do this. I think you're good at this. And I'm just like, Patrick, leave me alone. Like, I don't want to do this. And then finally, after the hundredth time that he said you should do this, I finally was like, OK, whatever. Like, let me interview a couple of athletes. And then, I mean, within five minutes of the first interview, I was like, this is what I'm made to do. Mm -hmm. I love this. This is great. This is my passion. And then from there, I just kept doing YouTube interviews. Um, I took over the bottom line and tried to be a little bit more creative with it and really expand um, my Rolodex by going to some of these events and um, utilizing other members on the team who had already built some relationships. And really from there, I just it just felt so seamless. Like I felt like I was finally in a job that my passion professionally mm -hmm. and personally was, was there. It was just, it was just a genuine love for what I was doing. Yeah. And you don't really consider that a job. You just think of it as kind of like it's a hobby. Right. Well, it, well it's, it's still weird to me that I get paid to make YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> It's just so strange, especially when I come from this very um, cookie cutter local TV news background where now when I try to explain my job to people like in their mind, they're like, oh, you left TV to make YouTube videos. But they just obviously don't get <laughs> yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because when you say it like that, it does. It sounds very strange, but it's just it's so much fun. Like it doesn't matter that sometimes I don't sleep during event weekends because I'm genuinely loving what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, and obviously it's like uh, YouTube's a little different than like your local media stuff. So did you get like nervous in the first like couple episodes of like, okay, you know, is the stream going okay? Is like all my stuff working? <laughs> like, like what, what was, what was going on? Like with the whole setup? Well, so I guess I didn't realize how often I would call the engineers at the TV station <laughs> because if you have technical problems, 
You just pick up the phone, you call the engineer, they come over and they help you within 30 seconds. Now I am my own engineer mm -hmm. and I'm realizing how much I don't know. Like a lot of it is fake it till you make it. Like, is this microphone oh, working? Yeah, I don't know course, if it's yeah. connected to the right thing. Like <laughs> is, yeah. I've got a couple of different like cameras, like which one is connected and my Wi-Fi. I've had to upgrade my Wi-Fi connection and then get an Ethernet cable and all of these things that I mean, I never thought that I would have to learn. And you just kind of figure it out as you go. I'm sure you, you probably know the same thing. It's like oh, oh, yeah. you do it a couple of oh, yeah. times and then you upgrade the equipment and you figure out what streaming services work. And <laughs> yeah. So, learn. so, so for me, the first, like, I think it was like the first eight months, all I used was my cell phone and two lapel mics. <laughs> yes. So I literally, I, <laughs> I literally had a lapel mic on me and then I use, I was using my, my former like employees computer and I did like, like uh, I did, I was using zoom on that and literally, like, yeah. I literally was doing the interview on an ironing board and I put the lapel mic, like clipped it to the ironing board. So right at what the speaker was press record. <laughs> and like, and the thing was like the app I was using, you only had an hour to record somebody. Right, 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 right. Before and, and, it kicks you off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, you're like trying to like, you're like looking at the time, like it's like you're literally like looking at the, the um, uh, that you know your phone being like, oh crap, I got five minutes, and I have like ten more questions to ask them. But like, yeah. Yep. It's, so um, <laughs> but I started doing that, and then you know Scott was a huge help from Clydesdale uh, Fitness and Friends, yeah. Clydesdale Media. Now, um, he's like, I'm like, hey, what do I need to do to like upgrade my stuff? And he's like, get a mixer, and I'm like, okay, mm. and then like. I bought a microphone and then, you know, it was just kind of like slowly working my way up. And then for Christmas last year, I got the GoPro, uh, GoPro 10. So I'm using that as a camera right now. And like, and like, and now I have like all these lights and you know, the, the blue lights and it's just like, right, I love it. it. It's a sick hobby, sick hobby. So, um, <laughs> but it's like, you always want to get like the newest gear and you're like, oh, this stuff's so sick. And like, you right, know, like because then you watch like somebody else's like YouTube or listen to somebody else's podcast and you're like, wow, their voice sounds so crisp. Like what microphone are they using? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I want to get this like big computer screen and like these all these big cameras and like more of like a better mm -hmm. background or like a backdrop or something like that. So it's just like my wheels are always churning every single time and even like doing like live streams too because like i know yeah. you i know you guys mainly just do recordings and then then post it after but like i'm always like kind of like interested in maybe doing live streams but then my problem is yeah. like what happens if like you know you're you're lagging or i'm lagging and there's like a huge pause and it's just like i'm i'm, I'm always petrified with that because at least like if they're recorded i can edit it and then like just take that take that part out and then kind of go from there Right. Honestly, like a big, well, a couple of reasons why we do more recordings than going live. Um, one is because we have like a, a release schedule mm -hmm. and we try to like release in the same time, which I suppose you could do if you did it live. Yeah. Um, but, but also, yeah, it, I mean, going live doesn't bother me in, in any way. I mean, I've been going live for the last decade of my <laughs> life, <laughs> but it's the technology mm -hmm. that scares me. I can't, I can't rely on it. I just can't rely on the streams. <laughs> no, no. And now, now my zoom, like I, it won't update. And so now it like sends the folder mm -hmm. to like another area. And I'm like, I'm trying to update it. And I'm like, I got everything's updated on my computer. Like, what's the deal? Like what's, what's going on? But it just, I don't know. Like I'm like leaving Google searching it and stuff like that. And it's just like, ah, forget it. I'll just keep it as is, I guess. And just wait till something happens and I'll fix it. Right, exactly. Or that we can find a YouTube video that gives us all of the answers that we're looking for. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs>